Welcome to From the Pilot Seat. Join me as we explore real aviation stories, lessons learned, and incredible flying machines. If you love flying or want to learn, hit subscribe and come along for the ride. For deeper insights, check out my books, Lessons from the Sky and from the Pilot Seat. They could make all the difference on your next flight. Compound Emergencies, C-130, Hercules, name withheld by request, Fall 2011. There I was, flying in the right seat of my C-130 coming home from the Area of Responsibility EAOR. The trip to the sandbox had gone smoothly. After spending a night downrange, we loaded up to start the journey back. What we didn't suspect at the time was that this would be the day we'd fall behind schedule and be tested in a way no one on the crew had been uh, before. I was still relatively new to my squadron, having only been there approximately six months, straight out of the schoolhouse. While we were flying somewhere over the Mediterranean Sea, someone noticed an engine oil low light. In my short career, I'd already seen a couple of prop low oil lights, but never an engine oil low light. From the light, our eyes quickly shifted up to the oil gauges to see which engine was having the issue, and it was obvious. Number four was completely empty. Normally, the light will come on at approximately four gallons remaining, which told us this engine must have lost its oil very quickly. After the shutdown, we discussed our options as a crew and checked the regulations. We were en route to Royal Air Force Base Mildenhall in the United Kingdom, and having maintenance there and a favorable weather forecast, we decided to continue our trip. However, if you've been flying very long, you know that forecasts aren't always spot on. After crossing the Mediterranean, we were finally back over land and closing in on the Alps. We were at 16,000 mean sea level, MSL, when the weather started to creep up to our level. From our forecast, we were only supposed to have light icing up to 14,000 MSL. As we started entering the weather, it became apparent that the icing forecast was a little off. The Hercules has excellent anti-icing capabilities, assuming they work as advertised. By this time, we were well over the mountains and trying to climb up and out of the icing level. We then noticed that neither the number two engine inlet anti-ice or the spinner de-ice was working. As the ice building up on the inlet was quickly turning into a large block of ice, we started to have visions of that engine ingesting that block. We were still over the mountains and couldn't yet descend. And oh, by the way, we weren't doing a very good job of climbing out of the icing either. We eventually got down to about 130 knots, indicated airspeed KIAS with maximum power set on the remaining engines, and we just popped out of the weather. We were basically hanging on the props as we skidded along the top of the clouds. We were out of the ice, but still not having a good time. Our maintainers in the back were all awake by this time, and were frantically running back and forth from wing to wing, trying to see what was going on out on the engines. Other maintainers were up front with the engineer trying to figure out why the anti-icing was only partially working. Our engineer accidentally received a large shock while trying to troubleshoot anti-ice issues back in the electrical equipment. To top things off, we also had one prop fluxing out of limits that would not correct. To recap, we had one engine shut down, another in shutdown condition, and another that could ingest a block of ice at any moment. We were flying at 130 KIAS. Just out of reach of the icing, the mountains were still below, and there was a whole crew of maintainers who you could say was a bit concerned. Before things got too much worse, we finally cleared the mountains and made a high-speed descent through the icing. We found the closest piece of suitable pavement we could to put the plane down. The aircraft commander elected to not shut down the engine with the prop malfunction. Due to the greater emergencies we were dealing with, he decided it wasn't worth shutting that one down and ending up on two engines. We landed uneventfully. Lessons learnt. 
The best takeaway for me in this event was dealing with compound emergencies. We had several different problems going on at once, and we really had to prioritize them. It was a great example of the old adage of aviate, navigate, and communicate. We had to decide what the greatest risk was at each particular phase in the sequence of emergencies and adjust appropriately. In the end, I think we handled a complex situation reasonably well as a crew, and I don't think I would have done anything differently had I been in the left seat. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to subscribe for more stories from the pilot seat. If you love flying or want to learn, hit subscribe and come along for the ride. For deeper insights, check out my books, Lessons from the Sky and from the pilot seat. They could make all the difference on your next flight.